as we'll talk about in a minute, you know, the program is intended to meet you where you are. So that's why I can say, as Lee will too, there's no wrong answer because everybody's on a different part of their career journey. And what we have enjoyed in the first 10 cohorts, hard to believe, but um, Devanya, I guess, Karita was part of the ninth group, maybe, Lee, mm -hmm. uh, I yep. want to say. Yep. And so, but the, the best thing I can tell both of you is that when you bring good people together, good things happen. Mm -hmm. And our job is simply to do that. And we'll talk about in a minute kind of how the program is designed. And hopefully both of you will leave understanding more, but know that we're gonna have time for questions. So yeah. any and all questions we welcome. And so I guess Lee, we can jump into, um, well, let me start by introducing myself. Again, uh, you may have picked up who we are, but Patton McDowell is the name. And this program is one that we started a couple of years ago because our, our firm is focused on nonprofit leadership. We are really committed to helping nonprofit leaders identify their next step on their path, because we know if we empower people like you to, your organizations are going to do better. And so while leadership is the start, everything else follows, whether it's program, fundraising, board development, strategic planning, all the things you all have to do, we believe is strengthened by your leadership. So. I've been in this business for 30 years um, in various <laughs> nonprofit roles and then started the firm about 15 years ago to work with organizations like yours. And I'm fortunate to have also in the Zoom room, a colleague, Lee Williams, who joined me and I'll let her introduce herself. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, I have been with PMA and Patton since June of 2020 and love the variety of what we get to do. But Pat and I are most passionate about this mastermind program and other coaching arrangements that have stemmed from it. Um, like you said, we've had 10 cohorts go through so far and I'll show you a little bit about what those folks have looked like. And you guys are a perfect representation of the types of folks that we love to work with. Um, so just got a few slides and I'm kind of the, um, the program director. So I'll send you guys like a little Google form once you've applied and been uh, approved and, you know, just kind of deal with the PowerPoint and the worksheets and stuff that follow. Um, so Pat and I make a really good team when it comes to this program. And speaking, speaking of, of the program, yeah. <laughs> now, we, let's jump in and again, give you an idea. And by the way, again, we can share Karita, you have a very cool system already to collect information, but happy to share and answer any questions. Um, the design of the program is what's on the screen. Create a network, not just with the seven or eight people in the group. And by the way, there are two groups we're putting together this spring. So we're excited about that. We have enough interest for two. Put them in a room together, get to know each other and create a network, not just with the other six or seven people in the Zoom room, but also the network we've built now over 10 cohorts. So we can connect Mike with somebody else from cohort four or Karita from cohort two, because we feel like that's somebody you need to meet, somebody who's dealing with a similar issue that you are, someone that could benefit from your knowledge, that community is what this is all about. Literally the program is broken down into seven different sessions. Um, these are two hour Zooms, Thursday afternoons, which you'll see and you may have seen on your uh, on the website. <laughs> and we're building a toolkit for you that we have assembled so far, but we can also adapt it to what you need. So in other words, each session has a framework, but if you come to us outside and say, I could use more on that topic, we'll help you find what you need. Lee, I'm gonna turn to you as I'm about to lose my voice here. <laughs> no problem. Like I said, Pat and I make a good team. Um, so we have had over 80 graduates so far. So like we said, Devanya just finished up and we've had 80 other um, nonprofit leaders from around the country, literally. I know in the upcoming spring cohort, we've already got somebody from Minnesota and California, Long Beach signed up. 
So lots of um, lots of different regions. And as you can see on the screen, this is kind of representative of an average cohort, which is between six to eight people. Um, and I think what you'll notice here is the variety. So you've got um, Natalie Allen from an arts organization. You've got Danielle from a um, healthcare um, higher ed. And then you had somebody like Michael Streisick, who was in between jobs and looking to figure out his next step. And the mastermind program really allowed him to think about what his plan was going to be. And he was looking at a more um, immediate focus because he was literally trying to find his next job. But it also allowed him to think about what the next one, three, five, ten years looks like. Um, Jared Keaton is another example of we have folks who are, you know, looking to move up within their own organization. Um, maybe eventually looking at what that next role might be, but we don't want anyone to think that we're trying to get you to quit your job. Jared was a great example of somebody that had just been promoted to the CEO role at the Alliance Center for Education. And he just said, I want to be the best CEO that I can be. And this program was perfect for him to meet other executive directors and CEOs, learn a little bit about their challenges. He had a new staff that he was working with. So it was a really great place for him to kind of have a new network of professionals that had dealt with some similar issues that he was dealing with in his new role. And just one more example from earlier this year, this was another time that we had two cohorts. We had the diamond group and the gold group. And again, hopefully you see a large variety of um, folks and um, Creed, I'm glad that you're representing somebody that doesn't have a pure fundraising background um, like our friend Gloria down in um, South Carolina. I think kind of a similar title, right? Was family services manager. Um, and she was at a, uh, an organization in South Carolina and wanting to build out her leadership and think about her leadership plan. And she um, didn't never told us she felt any kind of way about not being a fundraising background. This is not at all about the fundamentals of fundraising in any way. And we really have had lots of diversity when it comes to backgrounds and experiences. Um, Sam Smith is another person that kind of came in in a role that he was um, that he loved, but he was open to new opportunities. And he is now the executive director for the Greenlight Fund. And he told us, Patton and I had lunch with him um, about a month ago, and he actually told us that he would not have applied for that role had he not been in the mastermind program because he wouldn't have had the confidence to think that he could be in that type of role. So hearing stuff like that is why Patton and I love this program, not to get people out of their jobs, but to just you know have people think about the opportunities that are going to be best for them and their next step, step on their leadership journey. Um, Patton, do you have your voice back? Do you want to? I think so. I'll okay. try not to get choked up. And so okay. it's not just the emotion of the program, real. Uh, like every, I think, family I talk to, somebody's dealing with something. Um, if you proceed on this, and of course, we want both of you to do so, but we're asking you to consider three accountabilities. So in other words, if you're going to do it, let's do it right. And number one is is just be responsible for your own learning. We're going we're gonna to facilitate what we think will be highly engaging and helpful to you. And, but it's up to you. We're not going to collect homework. We're going to give you worksheets. We're going to give you things to read and things to think about, things to write. But we want you to embrace it for your own purposes and not worry that we're chasing you for certain information. So that's what number one means. Be responsible for your own learning. Let the program help you. Um, number two is equally important. The people that sign up, and I bet you two would agree, you're doing this because you want to associate with other nonprofit leaders. So we kind of need you to show up because other people are expecting you to show up, right? So we don't want people to sign up and just kind of passively listen and never say anything. We want you to engage. You're going to get to meet and, and work with your colleagues. And so they want that just as you do. And notice what's clear in the parentheses on number two, it's confidential because we have conversations about, hey, my boss is driving me crazy. My board is driving me crazy. My funder is driving me crazy. The issues that are real in nonprofit leadership, we're gonna talk about. And I think you'll find this to be a safe space to share challenges that probably somebody else in the room has dealt with, or will just give you some advice or feedback as they will want your advice or feedback for something they're dealing with as well. And then last, and intentionally last, is, yeah, Lee and I want you to be committed to this program. We're glad to have you, and we want you to be an active participant. But notice the way that slide sequences the three. 
number one, it's 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 up to you. And and that's what we hope you'll take away that we want you to engage in a way that's meaningful for you. And I think the next slides will give you a little more idea of what that means. So Leah, little, you want to talk about yeah, some of the sure. mechanics of the program? Yeah. So um, you're going to walk away with this with a lot of stuff. We'll tell you that right now. Um, in the very first session, we start to talk about your vision framework, and it's kind of like a strategic plan for yourself. So have you guys taken the time in your busy, busy work um, life to think about where you want to go? I keep re referencing that next one, three, five, ten years. Um, you know, what kinds of sectors are you open to? Um, what uh, what types of roles are you going after? So we have um, we have tools to help you think through that vision framework and kind of answer some questions for yourself and then kind of put together a statement so that you know, if Mike uh, comes to Karita and says, hey, I'm looking for this type of role or I want to, you know, improve this about my role now, it's a little bit more thought out and, you know, kind of putting together that framework for yourself. That's just one example. The other three are some more examples. We do some assessment work, thinking about the 10 essential leadership skills and experiences to become a top leader. Um, we talk about what those are and kind of where you might want to focus your time. We talk about this a personal favorite for us, and I think it really resonates with a lot of folks is this idea of a personal board of directors. So you guys have boards of directors for your organization, but what about for yourself? What about mm. thinking about not literally convening a board of directors, but the types of people that you could go to for different issues. So if Mike says, I just don't have a great background in the financial acumen. Well, hey, Mike, what if we think about, you know, somebody from our other um, cohort or somebody in your network that you could talk to about the um, the financial aspect of running a nonprofit? Um, so that's always a fun exercise. And then we also have you think about the last thing on the left hand side of the screen about your personal planning retreat. And this is always a fun thing. People say, oh, I can't, you know, get this done right now. But yeah, we want you to think about what that would look like for yourself. You've spent a lot of time in team retreats, um, probably our organization or planning those retreats. What about taking that time for yourself? So that's always a fun thing. We think about the agenda and what that might look like if you were to, if you were to take that time. And then what the sessions look like. Um, like I said, it's a group of six to eight colleagues, uh, very diverse in, in terms of leadership skills and experiences. And they're really interactive sessions. We never have the feedback, never that the sessions are too long. They fly by and we do it really in 15 to 20 minute segments. So that's the longest that Pat and I would be, you know, kind of presenting content. And then it's a lot of breakout groups, a lot of interacting with your colleagues and they move really fast. And some of those assignments and resource material that I talked about on the left hand side, I'll always be sending a follow up email with a worksheet, not to be collected, not to say, Greta, did you do that worksheet or anything like that, but just to give you more to think about during between the sessions. We do ask between sessions that you connect with one of your colleagues for a networking call. And that ends up being um, one of people's favorite parts about the program is really, you know, hey, Mike and Karita, you guys are going to connect this week. And at the beginning, we give lots of prompts for what those calls could entail, like, hey, talk about your vision framework or talk about your leadership skills and experiences. And then we find quickly that you guys are really good at this and very good at networking and that those calls um, tend to fly by as well. Um, and then at some point throughout the program, everyone has the opportunity to sit in the hot seat and it's less painful than it sounds. Um, and that's an opportunity for you to present to your colleagues something that you're proud of when it comes to your leadership and let them ask questions. And then also something that you're challenged by right now. So like Patton was referencing, my board's driving me crazy or my boss is driving me crazy or I just hired somebody new, what do I do? Um, and it's a real hallmark of the program. It's a real hallmark of mastermind groups in general is having this hot seat support and getting the chance to have one-on-one -on -one feedback from your colleagues. Um, so you'll get a chance to do that at some point throughout the program. It's really packed full. And you want to talk about the path? Yeah, it, the, the whole program is, is illustrated on the slide in front of you. So there's seven sessions and again we won't get into the detail of each one but we believe the path to nonprofit leadership success includes each of these seven component parts and what we're trying to do is equip you for the rest of your professional life in other words this is not a you go through and you check the box and you get all seven and you're done you'll always be evaluating your career vision right each year you should reevaluate where you're going 
each year you should self-assess, you know, to what, what you need to work on, what you're already doing well and might be able to leverage further. You see things like getting in shape, and that doesn't just mean your physical shape, but professional shape, right? Are you doing things to help you succeed? And we talk about the knowledge you need to gain and the systems to, to, to learn, because you're never going to stop learning. So I hope you see where I'm going. Each of these items is something you do and you keep doing. And we're hoping to give you a framework and a toolkit to do just that. Lee mentioned the building community, building your personal network, a personal board of directors. And finally, we talk about at the very last session, or how are we going to activate this? You know, hopefully you've gained knowledge and great connections with your colleagues, but we don't want this to be theoretical. You know, it's going to be, all right, Mike, what are you going to do with this? You know, if we finish this program in late spring, the question to Karita might be, all right, Karita, what are you going to do this summer? Where do you want to start? And let's talk about activating your plan to make sure you're moving in the direction you want to move. Last slide, and I'll let you guys ask some questions. Um, I'll put a link to uh, the application, which should take literally five minutes in the chat in just a second. Um, and you'll see the dates. Um, and don't let it scare you if you can't make one or two of either of the dates. Say, I really want to do the diamond group, but um, I have a training plan for March 30th. Since we have a small group, we can oftentimes move it up by a day or change the time on a day. We've done that almost every cohort. So if something is working for you, you know, 80% of it, um, just let us know. And there's a spot in the application to say that um, certain dates don't work for you. Um, we're excited that the gold group is almost full. There's like one or two spots remaining in the gold group. And we do have some we do have still have a couple spots in the gold group and then the diamond group um, still has some space in it as well, but two hour sessions uh, two to four Eastern time on Thursdays and um, we'd love to have you both so we'll stop there and let you guys ask any questions that you may have. And I will work on putting the um, information page and the application in the chat.